In 1958, a New Zealand economist named Amran Phillips, researching relationships between wages and unemployment in the UK, made a finding that would shape the study of economics for decades to come. In his paper, The Relation Between Unemployment and the Rate of Change of Money Wage Rates in the United Kingdom, 1861 through 1957, Phillips observed an inverse relationship between the rate of change in wages and the unemployment rate. The lower the rate of unemployment, the higher the rate of change in wages. Economists quickly ran with this idea, extending it to price levels or inflation in an economy. That was probably their first mistake. Although well-intentioned, if you consider that labor costs are a substantial portion of the total expenses for firms. More on this mistake later. The results of Phillips' research was a concave, downward sloping curve we now call the short-run Phillips curve showing what we understood to be a relationship between the inflation rate on the y-axis and the unemployment rate on the x-axis. In the 1960s, this curve made all the sense. We were still using the aggregate expenditures, or AE model, which never considered the endogenous influence of price levels on the size of the economy. So to economists then, the economy could be in two potential states besides equilibrium. In an inflationary gap with low unemployment but high rates of inflation, or in a recessionary gap with low inflation and high unemployment. Nothing else had really been experienced by modern economists. And the decade following the publication of Phillips' study was actually quite consistent with its findings. In the US, between 1961 and 1969, inflation and unemployment had a pretty predictable trade-off. But notice the concave shape of the curve demonstrates that the trade-off wasn't linear. The change in unemployment between 1968 and 1969 was much smaller than the change in inflation over that same period. This shook policymakers in the Nixon administration that just took the White House in 1969. They attempted to use contractionary policies like wage ceilings and reductions to federal spending to nudge the economy back toward a rate of unemployment closer to its natural long run. The result? Unemployment went up as they anticipated, but so did inflation. Little did economists then know that they were experiencing the beginning of a dragged out ending for the tidy Phillips curve. The 1970s saw the relationship between inflation and unemployment entirely diverge, with prices climbing even as unemployment went up. What was going on? Maybe we shouldn't have expected any better. Today, with decades of data to analyze, it becomes fairly obvious that the tidiness of the 1960s wasn't the norm. Actually, there hardly seems to be any relationship at all looking at the long-term data. That is, unless you start to consider that the relationship between inflation and unemployment actually goes through phases. If we take that graph that looks like a scattered buckshot and draw a chronological line through it, we can see what looks like swirls or loops. Today, we think these loops can be broken up into expected phases. When unemployment and inflation have a negative relationship, we call this the Phillips phase. When inflation and unemployment have a mostly positive relationship, both grow together, we call this the stagflation phase. Stagflation left serious scars on this nation's society and economy. I'll go into how we're still dealing with that more specifically in New York City in another video. The final phase, the recovery phase, sees both inflation and unemployment falling together. Why does inflation and unemployment seem to move through this regular waltz? I'll explain that next with a demonstration.